Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So today we're doing a love reading for the year 2023 and this reading is going to encapsulate what you can expect to find in love in the year as we go ahead and I'm going to draw 12 cards for each um, month, a card for each month and uh, you can come back and look at this video through the year and see if it resonates. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, first, please go ahead and choose option one, two, three, four, or five. All right, and we'll start the reading. So for those of you who've chosen the option number one, we're asking, what can we expect in love in 2023? What can we expect in love in 2023? All right, so if you chose the first option, we're asking, what can we expect for love in the month? And this would represent January. So in the month of January, we have the Page of Pentacles reversed. And I would say that uh, in this month, as far as love is concerned, you might be unsure of your footing as far as uh, where you stand um, is concerned, whether, whether you understand really clearly what is going on with your potential partner or your partner. You might think that you understand something that they've said to you, but then you realize later that it hasn't, that you've understood incorrectly. You could have squabbles about uh, financial matters like paying bills or having um, come to an agreement about something or thought that you had come to agreement, an agreement about something, but then you find out that you haven't actually been clear along the way and so it's something that you are un not expecting comes up in this month and in terms of love it might cause some squabbles with love it doesn't have to be big squabbles it's just simply uh, a misunderstanding I would say if you're single this card means that you might be looking in the wrong places for love you might be actually thinking that you are uh, that love's going to come to you but perhaps you never open the door for that love or perhaps you think that you're going to find love if you go to a certain social setting and you go out there and hang out there but then it doesn't actually happen uh it's almost like you are quite too, in two minds about it as well like you're not sure if you want to have it or you don't want to have it and it might be that even if it is coming your way you may push it away all right so if you are However, in this reading and you're not looking for love and you are single, I would say that this card talks about you getting your own footing for the month of January and that it's time for you to really look into where you headed to and put into practice something that you've been wanting to put into practice. But you might find that you have some perhaps financial challenges doing that or perhaps things are not working out exactly as you planned it to you might also find that you've, you've it's almost elusive like it's just beyond your reach and so for February we have the seven of swords and I think that when you have the seven of swords there's a qu quite a, a determinedness about this card you might be determined to create something or to manufacture something into your life. You might be quite um, willing to put in the effort that is required for you to be able to achieve something that's going to help you in terms of meeting somebody or, or within your relationship that is existent already. So this usually indicates overcoming a certain challenge, uh, having success with regard to something. And here I would say that um, in this situation with regard to love, I would say that you have come to a good footing in terms of love. So whatever you've experienced in January, would there's no trace of that in February. You have a, a solid footing with your partner or with your potential partner. There is a very clear indication that there's been progress made in terms of um, your, your love, the development of your love, in terms of how the relationship is faring. And there's just movement in terms of love and and how this is all playing out if you're single and we have this card here i would say that 
you're on your way to finding love. You have prepared yourself to be able to find love. There's none of that uncertainty that you experienced in January. And you can be quite clear that in February, you are, even if you haven't met somebody as yet, you are quite cl close to meeting somebody because you've prepared yourself to do that. And I would say that you're 90% there um, when, when you see a card like this. Now, if you are, um, as I said previously, you are single and you're not looking for love, but you're kind of curious and that's why you found yourself here, then I'd say that you are quite clear with yourself at this point in February and that you have made great strides in um, affirming yourself and in terms of feeling more secure within yourself in terms of whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Perhaps it's something to do with your your own personal goals or your work goals but either way you are really you've really brought yourself to a good state uh, and you've made great progress since we've been in January here all right so let's look at March so as you roll around to the month of March you might find yourself in a situation where you are uh, making a sacrifice of sorts where you are perhaps uh, being patient or needing to be patient while somebody, your partner, uh, perhaps take some time to get through a particular struggle or to do something. Perhaps they've decided to renovate the, the, the home that you live in and it's taking time and you need to have uh, a bit more patience than you realized you would have. If you are single, the card here talks about you actually um, taking time out to to once again focus on what needs to be done at hand it sometimes can refer to discipline so it could be that you're taking action to be disciplined at this particular time that perhaps you are away on a course or on a some kind of program or a conference and this takes up a lot of your time and there's a sacrifice being made so that there isn't much time to attend to your own matters in terms of love but rather that you are off somewhere, you need to be somewhere and it distracts you from yourself. Regardless of whether you are in a relationship or not, you will be not as focused on love in this month of March as you normally would be. This is not to say that your love diminishes, but rather that the focus is elsewhere. It's more on taking care of something or being disciplined taking care of yourself, bringing yourself to that next level, perhaps f finishing certain things that you need to take care of, or being functionary uh, rather than being able to go out and meet somebody or go on, on a date with your partner. If you are in some kind of um, relationship which might be coming to an end, this would also signal the, the ending of a particular relationship, but it would end on, on a good note and because it you need to end it on a good note, perhaps because you have ch children or perhaps because you um, you expect that um, something it's better to do this. Uh, there is something here where there's still um, like love underneath everything else. So maybe it's not got to do with a, um, a separation. And as I said, this is only for people who are aware already that they're heading towards a separation. I don't think this will be some kind of unexpected separation that will come up here. It doesn't indicate that anyway. I also think that if you are single and you're not looking for love, but you have this card, I think that you might find that you feel quite alone in March. It might be a time when you feel quite unsupported. It's like you don't feel like somebody's got your back and you might feel that um, you might really come to the full extent of your loneliness during this time. So uh, for some reason, perhaps you are separated from the, your usual support system and you are made to feel more acutely in touch with your loneliness or a loneliness develops perhaps. So as we move on to April, we have El Loco. And I feel that for many of you, in this reading, by the time you get to April, you are going to be making great strides in terms of love. Now, I've seen this also on readings for clients um, and for other people as well. And I've noticed that there's something that turns around in the month of April, especially in terms of love. And so this is um, not the first time that I've seen a, a really positive new beginning here in love. Um, and I feel that for 
whether you are in love, whether you're not in love, whether you are with somebody or not with somebody, you're going to find that April is a month where you can have a new beginning, where there's a fresh start, where there's a new energy that comes into you and you are you perhaps you meet somebody, uh, perhaps it's not indicated here that you meet somebody, but I feel that for some of you, you might be meeting somebody. Like for those of you who are single and looking for love, I think that in April, you might fall in love with somebody or you might have a crush on somebody, which later leads to something more. And uh, for those of you who are in long term settled relationships, you might find that there's a fresh new start to your relationship as April rolls around because you're going to find that you have a, a lot of different energy uh, and it's um, kind of infused into various relationships in your life, including your love life. And so this is going to be quite uh, something to look forward to. So as we come to May, we have the Ace of Cups reversed. So the love that you might have found in April for some of you might not meet up to your expectations or might there might be a delay in when you can see each other again. It might be that you are falling in love, but you can't have what you want right at that given moment. Um, it might be that um, the person that you've met uh, as you've strolled out to meet um, in the month of, or you've allowed yourself to meet in the month of April turns out to be a little bit, um, well, I would I want to say below your expectations, but a little bit different from your expectations. Let's put it that way. And I don't think it's below your expectations. I think they just represent something much more different than what you expected them to be. This is not, however, an unhappy card or a negative card. The um, Ace of Cups is always a positive card. And if it's reversed, it just means that it's a little bit delayed or there's some kind of distance between you and that person. If you are somebody who's single, you're going to find that um, that this is still a month for you in May. It's still a month where you could meet somebody. It's still a month where you could uh, fall in love with someone. But don't be too hard on yourself and don't beat yourself up if it doesn't happen. And don't think thoughts like, oh, I'm never going to meet somebody. Oh, you know, I'm never going to see somebody or meet somebody. Uh, it's not happened until now. And I don't think it's going to happen because these are the kind of feelings that you're prone to have around me. And I think that if you could just release that, then you will open yourself up to new um, blessings as far as love is concerned. If you are in a relationship with someone you married or you're in a long-term partnership with somebody and you have this card here, I think that you might um, find that uh, the, the, the eagerness and the fresh thought that you had in April is somewhat subdued and not as fresh anymore, but it's still, there is still love. There might be a little bit of comfort that creeps into your love life and that is not always a bad thing but it's not necessarily the first sparks of true love or just falling in love so as we come along to june we have the chariot here so i think that by june you would have made a decision i think that you won't just make a decision in terms of love but in other areas of your life as well i think it's, it's about making a decision as to what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be doing it. I feel that you might find yourself be kind of feeling one way, but thinking in a different way and wanting to kind of follow your rational thought, but being pulled towards your emotions. So you might find that you are kind of flying ahead as you come to June in terms of your emotions and you're almost trying to rein yourself back with your your logical thought. I think whether you are in a relationship or not, you will be, if you're in a long-term relationship or you just, you know, just starting off with somebody, you might find that there's a decision to be made quickly. Perhaps a person needs to go somewhere far away from you and you are thinking perhaps you should go with them or perhaps they should consider staying longer with you. There is some question like this. I feel, however, that there is some distance between you and a loved person uh, during this month. And that might not resonate for every one of you, but it does feel like there is some distance, either gaining ground or simply between you um, in that time. If you are a single person and you are looking for love, I think that things move ahead again in in June and you, you, you there might be moving ahead in the same way that they've moved ahead 
in April, but you might not find the time to slow down and get to meet somebody and get to know someone because it feels like you're going to be quite busy. Now, if you are that person who is not looking for love, but um, you are you are a single and you're just curious, I think that you will actually find that there are opportunities for love that come up in June. Uh, but once again, I think that you might be a bit too busy. You've, I think, however, that there's a bigger chance for you to find love in June than there is for that single person who's looking for love. Um, so, yeah, June seems to be quite an interesting month for you. So as you roll around to, to July, you're going to find that you have a lot more strength that you can offer in terms of your relationship, as well as in terms of your um, your interaction with people. You might find that you're a lot more confident, that you have uh, quite a lot of strength, that you have much more endurance in you. Uh, there's a sense of having fortitude. So if you were about to give up on, on love, uh, you might find a renewed desire to pursue that love. If there is, if you are looking for somebody and you haven't found somebody as yet and you're keen on somebody, you're going to find that you are... Um, you you have a lot more desire to meet somebody and a lot more drive to meet somebody in the month of July. It's like, you know, the lights are on. <laughs> it's time to go. It's it's like it's um, things have started up again. It, it feels in terms of love like it could be your springtime, even though you have had a good springtime here with this um, fool card. But I think that if you are, not looking for love but you are single and you were hoping to meet somebody and you have not yet meet, met somebody then I don't think that there's going to be a difference in terms of meeting somebody or I do think that if you have met somebody here in these months one of these three months that would be April May and June then you're going to find then you're going to find that you uh, actually have the possibility to continue and further whatever you have with that person. So for August, well, August is a really positive um, card for you for love because you have the King of Cups here. And I think that there is some declaration of love. There is some, uh, somebody who comes up to you and tells you how they feel about you. Or you could, uh, and they perhaps, or you could be in a relationship with somebody and they want to move things ahead in some way. You could have a situation where there is a kind of honeymoon period for you and your partner. Things are moving in a beautiful way. There's a lot of romantic moments. There could be quite romantic gestures coming from your partner or from you. You might feel that way as well. And I feel that August is really a really good time for you to enjoy that love that you have with this person that you're with. And... Um, if you are uh, single, whether you are interested or not interested in love, you will find that there will be interest around you and quite clearly uh, in your direction come August. So as we enter September, you have the Five of Swords. And I feel here that there might be some kind of conflict. You might be feeling quite competitive with your current partner. Uh, you might feel like you have something to prove to your current partner. There may be a little bit of insecurity that needs to be wiped away, and uh, but it rears its ugly head in, in terms of jealousy, for instance. One way or the other, this, this energy that you, have, that you have coming up in September is one of um, wanting to show that other person something. Now, if you are single and you don't have somebody in your life, I feel that the Five of Swords here um, is somehow indicating a defeat that you feel. You feel a defeatedness in in perhaps not being able to have met somebody as yet, or perhaps having met somebody, but then you are still for having thoughts about this thing not working out with somebody, with this person. And so you are cultivating these thoughts of defeat in your life. And perhaps it's not actually defeat. There is also a sense here that if you are in a relationship with somebody, in a in a long-term relationship with somebody, you might be having some competitiveness with them. You might be having some petty fights with them. And it might be something where it's really not worth it at all. But it's just, you know, a certain phase that your relationship is going through. It's nothing very serious usually. 
But um, this these ca this card does show that things are not so rosy at this moment that there can be a bit of conflict, and there is, as I said, this competitiveness. So as you come to October, there's this feeling of having had enough or having been finished with something, being being um, complete with something, that you've reached the, the end of the road with that thing. With It could be with regard to a particular issue that you have with your current partner, or it could be with perhaps if you're single and you are looking for someone and you have not found somebody, it might be that you've just had enough of thinking about that right now and you're going to move into a different direction you're going to start thinking about different things or you've come to an end of that phase in your life where you are looking out for somebody but you are willing to settle with the person that you are with already there is a sense here of passion though and a great deal of um, well this fire but um, as you would find with the wands but it is there is a sense here that all is not lost. It doesn't reflect badly on your relationship. I don't feel that your relationship is going to be um, str struggling or suffering with this realization that you'll be having or with this feeling that you're having that you've come to the end of the road with something. I feel that it's still quite possible for things to be going very well with you and it could be very passionate. It could be a time of great... Um, um, excitement as well but I do feel that there's a tiredness in this as well so it might be that you've been putting a lot of your energy into your partner or into the love relationship that you have and now it's just time to take a rest because you feel exhausted and it's just time to do that because you might be burning out and now this won't ne come necessarily right at the beginning it might come towards the end of the month of October um, but it, it could be something that you know it, it's forming this exhaustion is forming in you because you are so passionate and at some point it burns out, okay? Or you burn yourself out. So as you come to November, you feel like there you have definitely overcome something. So you might have overcome the stress that you might have had towards the end of the previous month where you might be feeling a bit burnt out or like you've had enough of something. You would have overcome whatever you've had. And it there is it is definitely a card of success, a card of gain, a feeling of having achieved something. And I feel that so November is actually quite... A, a time where there's a certain satisfaction that you feel within yourself with regard to love. So you might have had good relations in your love life or you might have met somebody that you are quite satisfied with having met. But either way, whatever it is, you are quite happy and satisfied with the gains that you've made, with the accomplishments that you've had, with what you've done until now in your relationship with regard to love. And even if you're single and you have still not met someone, You it doesn't bother you in the month of November. You are okay. You're feeling quite proud of yourself. You're feeling quite content with yourself and quite um, satisfied with your gains and whatever victories that you might have had or whatever achievements that you might have had in your life at that time. As we come to December, we have a lovely card for love. We have the Queen of Cups and here there it's a clear indication that you are in touch with your feelings that you are feeling the love and the um the the not the necessarily the desire but the love and the compassion and the nurturing that you need in your life so it's it feels to me like most of you would have somebody in your life um as you come to the end of this year and you are feeling very much in touch with that the feminine aspects of love that means you want to give your love you want to share your love you want to make the other person happy you want to give off yourself and I feel here that um, there's a great deal of understanding and compassion and empathy for those around you especially the loved ones in your life and I think here that um, December is a very you end in a very beautiful uh, you end the year on a very beautiful note as far as love is concerned. Now, if you are single and you have not met somebody until now, I feel that regardless, you are feeling quite beautiful and quite in touch with yourself and you're giving yourself what you need in terms of that love that you would normally be receiving from outside. And I don't see anything wrong with this. Uh, I feel that it's actually a wonderful reading. I also want to say that 2023 is a good year for love it's a good year for love coming into one's life and I think that many people who may might have been looking for love for a very long time and have not found love will find 
love and you might not find everlasting love but you will definitely interact with uh, someone on a romantic level in this year if not more than one person and for those of you who are in love relationships I feel like it's also a good year for love I don't feel there are going to be that one percent of people who do separate and divorce etc but it's definitely a lower percentage than it has been previously I feel that it's a year where people come together and are much more understanding uh, and much more able to um, allow that generosity of spirit and understanding so that people in your midst feel more comfortable and feel more um, loved just generally and accepted and so that is um, yeah it's it's going to be a good year I think there's going to be some I don't I wouldn't say ups and downs I, I would say the normal carryings on of love and there's definitely a potential in your reading here to meet somebody and to start off anew and you have the, the queen and the king of cups in this reading, which is wonderful. You also, you have strength and you have the fool and you have the chariot. So things are moving ahead. You have a couple of wand cards here, which is also quite, um, quite telling. And there's some sacrifices to be made um, as well in you, which will allow you to actually begin and start off in you which is really positive. I think here you might start the year on a bit of a wobbly note, so don't take a note of that. If nothing happens really in January, don't take it too personally. Um, your year is going to be looking very good in terms of love. Okay, I wish you all the best and uh, all the best in love and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the second option, we're asking what can we expect in love in 2023? Okay, so we have January of 2023 and we have the world. Now the world is a lovely card because what it says to you is that you can achieve anything and everything in this time and that you are almost there, that you have everything that it takes to be able to see your dreams and your wishes to fulfillment. So I feel that if you are in a relationship already, if you are in a marriage or in some kind of long-term relationship, you're going to feel like things have really, you've arrived, you know, like you have come to that place in your life where things are comfortable and good and happy and you just feel on top of the world. If you are somebody who's single and seeking a relationship, you're going to find that you are well on your way to one and that you're going to be able to make choices that will lead you to be able to find that love that you're looking for. I think here that uh, if you are single and not really looking for love, but you're still interested somehow, that it's a time for you to really develop yourself and work on yourself and um, ensure that your goals are um, being met uh, or your needs are being met through your goals and I think that um, it's a fantastic month generally speaking in terms of love in January now I wouldn't say that you necessarily will meet somebody here although there is a good chance that you could but it doesn't really scream to me that you will meet someone more that you feel really well and content in yourself with the decisions that you've made and the choices that you've made for your life and as we move into February feel that you are going to be swinging um, your sword you are going to be making choices you are going to be quite vocal in terms of what it is that you desire in terms of where it is that you want to go with what it is that you're doing and you're going to be on your way to getting what you want now I feel that there is a bit of I don't want to say naivety but there's a, a kind of young fresh energy about this so you're kind of venturing off in a new direction and making choices and moving in a direction which you wouldn't normally be doing and this might surprise your partner so somewhat if you are in a relationship this might surprise your partner it, um it definitely adds a fresh element in terms of your relationship and I feel that you might be quite sharp in terms of what you want to say so you might not mince your words I think also here, there's a chance that um, you could have come over something that was not so easy. You could be, be coming over some difficult times and now you feel like it's time for you to um, bat. You know, it's your batting. And I think here that um, if you are single and you are meet, looking to meet somebody, that February is a good time to send off those messages uh, to contact the person that you've 
perhaps had a crush on uh, that you're interested in to make the steps towards meeting or communicating at the very least with the person that you're interested in. And if you are somebody who's um, single and not actually really interested in finding love, I think that February is going to be a good month for you in terms of being able to understand exactly what it is that you want and need. You are better able to articulate what it is that you want. So as we go into March, you, you have the Three of Cups. There might be a celebration of sorts. There might be, some of you might be getting engaged. Some of you might be celebrating an anniversary or perhaps just celebrating something new that comes into your life. There's a new elevation of love in your life. So it might be that, uh, well, if you're in a relationship, if you're married or somehow in a some kind of permanent relationship, there's definitely joyous moments to be shared, to be celebrated. And it might be that you celebrate these moments with other people. And regardless, there's a joy that emanates, a free, overflowing feeling of joy that emanates through you during this time. And I think that your partner feels this as well and celebrates with you. However, if you are single, I think that you are definitely on your way to meeting somebody or perhaps being in situations where you could easily meet people and be inspired and stimulated by conversation, by uh, experiences, the fun that you have with these people. You will be in a situation where you will meet more people than you usually do in the month of March. Now, in April, we have a following uh, continuation of this um, this energy here where you are feeling quite satisfied and as if your wish has come true. So perhaps in April, you've met the love of your life. Perhaps you are reaching a stage in your relationship where you are, have something that you've been wishing for that's come true. Uh, perhaps you've been waiting for a certain step forward in your relationship or the person that you're interested in and they've taken that step forward and you have everything in the world to be happy happy about. It's as if a wish has come true in this month. If it hasn't in the month of April, I think that you can make a wish and it will be come true in terms of love in this month. There's definitely a sense of power that you have um, with uh, feeling elevated by the, the spiritual um, energy that's around you and supporting you at this time. And I think that it gives you a feeling of um, of empowerment, uh, ultimately, and a feeling of feeling quite supported, uh, just generally speaking, by the universe and by the forces that exist. As you move into May, we have the page of pentacles. And so you might find that you and your partner, if you're in a relationship, uh, are setting out to begin a new project, you might be um, starting up something new, it might be that you do decide to do something to surprise your partner, it might be that you decide to start a new project like looking for a new home um, or looking to build a new business together or something like that but there's definitely um, some kind of excitement in the air uh, regarding how you will go about producing something creating something it could also be that you decide at this point that you want to have a child and you decide to get become pregnant uh, it could also be that um that this card can also come up if you hear about the news of having a grandchild. It is likely that you are in a situation where you're able to create something and you have the physical means and the resources to be able to do that. If you are single and this card comes up, well, you have the chance to be able to create something for yourself. So I would say that you could go ahead and be proactive in terms of asking somebody on a date. You be allow the door to open for love. You could, in fact, um, work towards or invest in yourself in order to be able to attract this love to your life. So perhaps you are somebody who's uh, reclusive and you don't get out very much. And uh, when you get this card in May, it's almost like after this kind of energy here, it's almost like you're saying, OK, well, I definitely need to go out more. I definitely need to put a bit more effort into this thing. I, I definitely am going to start going out more. Perhaps this person's asked you out and you are getting ready to go out with them and you're getting ready to become that person who goes out. OK, and so that is something there. I think if you are single and you haven't met anyone, I think that the page of pentacles 
is somebody that could come into your life in the form of somebody who's younger than you, somebody who's there to assist you, perhaps as an assistant, perhaps you hire somebody who's going to work for you. And this person is there to be able to, to support you in some way, but that could also lead to some kind of romantic engagement with each other, some kind of crush or something like that. Okay, so as we move into June, we have the hanged man in the reverse position. So this almost gives me a confirmation of what I've said here in this card here, which is that if you are somebody who is not moving out much, who is not going out, not going to places where you could meet people, you may perhaps somebody who spends, you know, a lot of time by yourself, uh, or not in the company of other people, then I think that uh, this card in June is a kind of, um, confirmation of that. It's saying, okay, well, you are definitely moving ahead. You are definitely making progress. And there's a good chance that you will meet somebody. You are no longer wanting to hide yourself away. You are no longer um, sacrificing yourself or making a sacrifice for whatever it is. So if you are divorced, perhaps, and you have children, then you have come out here and you are moving ahead. You're no longer feeling like you need to uh, put yourself um, second or put yourself behind something. You're able to step in the in the front and say, well, here I am, and this is what I have to offer. People might read this in, in a negative way, and especially when you have the hangman in reverse, it could come up as um, as a negative card because or with a with a rather more negative meaning being that you ought to be making a sacrifice now you ought to be doing that but I don't feel that in this case I feel that this is quite an indulgent card or that you feel quite indulgent like I feel like you are still on the wave of everything that's taken place here and that you're feeling quite sociable and so there's no need to be able to retract yourself from society once again and make those sacrifices i feel that it's fine to be in the thick of things i think here if you are in a relationship then when you get this card here it's almost like um it's you kind of going with the flow with certain things and you're trusting the process and you're not feeling the need to slow down but it might be that your brakes have broke have been broken so just check on that you know check on whether you're actually wanting to not slow down for the for the purpose of not slowing down or whether you're not wanting to slow down because you can't slow down so um i think just read into that as you need to for your own life and see whether that applies to you um, I think here that um, you might just decide to go with the flow and things happen quite quickly. I just feel that there's quite a lot of movement for you as well in June and you might not have quite a lot of time to pay attention to the the subtleties of your partner and the things that perhaps you do for them that makes them, them happy normally. And this is something that, yeah, it kind of, it feels like there's no chance to do that. Um, if you are single and you have this hanged man reversed, I think here that you might have a spurt of energy that makes you want to get out and do things and, and, um, see people, but it's almost like it could be an illusion. It's almost like you telling yourself, oh yeah, this is great. And I'm going to go out, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to meet somebody, but it's almost like maybe that's not necessarily what you need to be doing at that given moment. And so that is something that you need to consider there as you come into June. Now, as you come into July, we have the moon and it's reversed. And I feel that there are going to be quite a lot of emotions that come to the fore. Now, I feel that if you are somebody who finds that July is a month that has been um, particularly difficult for you in the last few years, uh, that you've needed quite a lot of introspection, that you've needed qu quite a lot of time to go inward, whereas everyone else was being sociable and doing things and taking vacations or whatever, and you felt that you've not been able to do that. I feel that this year, the same kind of thing happens in, in, this, in this year, but I don't think it's going to be restricting you as much so what I feel happens here is that there's a um, kind of emotions that are run running freely okay so whether you're in a relationship or not there's these emotions that were within you that are running freely you might have some insecurities that are building up you might be able to reach deep down inside of yourself in an attempt to be healing yourself but in fact you just let out um uh, the, all the, the demons, like you've, you've opened a Pandora's box in a way. 
but in terms of emotions and reactions to certain things. And so you could be somebody who's quite dangerous to be around during the time, especially if you have a partner who is not expecting this from you. I think that uh, what comes out of July, though, is a great opportunity to heal some of those things that need to be released and let go of and to be left behind. And uh, so if you are, do feel that your emotions are a little bit unruly uh, in the month of July, then worry not. Just note that it's time to take in some of those things and to be able to work with it and heal it and move on from it. Okay, as we head into August, we have the Ace of Swords. Okay, so I feel that, and it's very interesting here, yeah, you have the Page of Swords and right directly underneath it, you have the Ace of Swords. So I think as you come into August, there's a feeling here where you're definitely out of that funky state in terms of being able to work with your emotions. you definitely out of that state where you are being a little bit indulgent in a way uh, and going off your rails. There's definitely a sense here that you want to control yourself a lot more and that you are moving away from these two energies here. I feel that you might struggle to articulate yourself in um, the month of August. It might be that you try to have a conversation with your loved one and it's difficult to get the get it across or there might be delays, there might not be the time to be able to have a discussion. It might be that you find that even if you have tried to talk to your partner about this burning issue, that you aren't able to get the resolution that you require from it from that discussion and I think that you could find yourself in a situation where you feel a little bit frustrated as a result. Now if you are single and you have this card here for August what you could find is that you aren't able to really be clear about what it is that you want, about who it is that you're looking for, about what the attributes are and the person that you're looking for it might be that you are unsure about it or you it could be that you, un, you you have some doubts as to whether you want to be in a relationship or not, whether you want to continue dating or being on dating apps or being on dating sites or whether you want to go out on blind dates. It might be that you you kind of reconsidering all of that and, and thinking to yourself, well, perhaps I don't actually need to do this or maybe it's not actually worth it. So it might be a bit of that in August. It could also be that you uh, perhaps have met somebody, but things are not really going anywhere immediately and you might become a bit despondent as a result of that. So that's August. As we come into uh, uh, September, we have the magician and so your energy and the, the, there's a shift in this in this energy. So I feel that you have uh, you have a couple of months here where things aren't going in one particular direction and then you, you have the magician card in which you can reverse it all. So basically you can choose at this point what it is that you want and you can choose to manifest what it is that you want and it will be so. And so it's up to you to actually recognize the power that you have in September and to be able to move things in the direction that you want. And this reply, uh, applies to both people who are in relationships as well as people who are single. Now, um, in your relationships, you might be able to um, sway things in the direction that you need to go into or um, speak to your partner and, and move things along in the direction that you both desire. It could be also that you are able to um, it, to just finally be able to create something. You're finally able to agree upon something to be able to create that thing that you want to create. It is a time where you can create quite easily. I say I think that if you are a single person and you you have the magician card in September, uh, I think the most important thing is to just ask yourself, well, what exactly do you want from a relationship, and what are you looking for? And don't be that specific in terms of the the physical attributes, but more in terms of the values that you're looking for in the person that you you desire to be with. And I think then you will be forth it will be excuse me the universe will be forthcoming in getting you what you desire but it's definitely a time where you can recreate and re um and magnetize what it is that you want in your life magnetize to you that is as we move on to october we have the two of swords and then we come into some indecision once again there's this ability to be able to choose whatever you want to but there's this indecision that's on either side of that 
And I think it it's because of these emotions that you would have had here. And it's and and also this I feel that this indecision needs to be worked through and needs to be come come through. I feel that there is there are options around if you are in if you are single looking for someone, I think there are definitely options around, but it's up to you to be able to make the decision as to who you want to be with. Now if you are in a relationship and we have the two of swords here, I feel that you might come to some kind of stalemate with regard to your partner. Perhaps you've tried to create something with them. Perhaps you've tried to do something with them or try to make them change in some particular way uh, and you're not able to make any headway. Now, it could be something as simple as uh, getting them to um, a kind of form certain routines uh, as far as hygiene is concerned and you might not be able to get them to do that even though you've tried it could be something as simple as that now if you it could be something bigger as well it could be that you've had this kind of time to think about things and you've come to a decision where you began to think that you were on the same page and you began to manifest together but then what happens is that uh, you find yourself kind of uh, not sure or in doubt about those decisions that you have made together as a couple. And as we move into November, we have the King of Pentacles. And so I think here that you are both, if you are in that relationship, you are both in the on the same page. You're both uh, kind of wanting more or less the same thing. You might be contributing to the relationship in a different way. You might be bringing something different to the table, but it is, you are on the same page. So I feel that whatever hesitation you've had here has been resolved in, in this following month in November. And you could be um, on, a, on a level where you are quite excited about the physical and the, yeah, the physical manifestation of, um, of the, your relationship. Now, uh, when I talk about physical manifestation, I'm talking about perhaps creating a home, perhaps um, uh, engaging in the act of marriage or a wedding, having a wedding, or uh, perhaps it's it's to do with maybe creating, doing uh, some kind of financial venture together, or just maybe repairing or renovating the home, uh, just stuff to do with that, that or, or putting together your finances, managing your financial stuff. I would not I would not read um, your uh, sexual activity into this card. I wouldn't, I would, I feel that that card is more, I I, I feel that it comes more from the wands uh, suit. Now, there are people who read the, this, these deck of cards uh, or any deck of cards as the pentacles referring also to sexual desire, but I, I don't necessarily think that is the case here. What I think is that there are more concrete things where you come together and you have decided certain things and you are flourishing as a couple. You are definitely prospering as a couple and you are making great headway. Now, if you are um, single, I think that you've spent a fair deal of time working with yourself and your emotions and you've decided to create something for yourself that is going to really benefit you in the long term. And you have seen the manifestation of that in the King of Pentacles. And I think that you don't really need to be with somebody. And this is something that you might have known and you might have been well aware of actually along the way. But I feel that in November, you will be somewhat on your own league and it might be that it doesn't even interest you to be with somebody at this point. Or you could be looking for a different type of person to match you and the achievements that you've made or the progress that you've made in your life. Okay, so as we come to the end of the year, we have the four of pentacles. So I think here it's more about consolidating what you've achieved and what you've recognized to have achieved in November. It's also about being quite conservative in terms of your relationship, looking after yourself, looking after your loved ones, looking after what you have already and to be in sh to be sure that you can preserve that. I think also that um, if you are single, that the four of pentacles could be that you perhaps uh, paying too much of attention to your material goods. It could be that you wanting to protect that very much and not necessarily want to share it. Um, it could also be that um, your focus is there. Your focus is on building this bank, you know, creating 
you know, making sure that you have you're well off financially and not actually paying that much of attention to uh, the relationships. Or you could be also this year could end as in you uh, being the one who's uh, paying it. You're the one who's paying for things in a relationship. You're the one who's taking care of things. It could also be the case here and the King of Pentacles. You could be the one who's taking on more of the financial responsibility. And in um, the Four of Pentacles, as you come to the year's end, if you are in a relationship, it could be that you are becoming a little bit more conservative on the spend and uh, trying to see where you can conserve and trying to actually uh, encourage your partner to have the same outlook as you as far as that is concerned. I think here um, you you are looking towards the future, though, as you, you, we come into the, the Four of Pentacles card here. I think there is a kind of note about, okay, how is, is this relationship going to go further? What needs what do we need to do in order for this relationship to go further? Now, and if you're single, I think that, you know, you're kind of looking at what you've achieved until now and how far you've done and the efforts that you've made through the year. Now, it could be that along the way here, you've you, if you were single, you began the year single, but with the intention of being in a relationship, you could be in a relationship around here already. And at that point, you know, you are fully in this relationship, fully invested in this relationship. And it could be that um, when you are, uh, when you come to the four pentacles here, it could be that you, you perhaps decide to pool together your resources and live together, for instance and or, or marry each other this could also be that you know the four the four card can actually represent marriage it's not just in the four of wands but it can also be so in in the four of pentacles it could be a relationship that is based on um or not necessarily the relationship but the marriage itself could be could be a, a response to pooling together resources in order to be more efficient so that is your reading for the year. I hope that it is um, going to be a great year in terms of love for you. And that I hope that 2023 is going to bring you all the blessings when it comes to love. And if you are with somebody that you love, then I hope that you have a very blessed year ahead. And if you aren't, well, I do certainly hope for you that you are able to find the love of your life. Okay, blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the third option, so for January we have the Knight of Pentacles. So I feel here that you've been busy working on something that you want to move ahead, but it's moving in quite a, a in a very slow. Uh, direction. So for those of you who are single, I would say that perhaps you've been waiting a long time to be with somebody or perhaps you've been waiting a long time to find the right person, to find somebody compatible, to find comfort in somebody. If you are in a long term relationship or in any kind of other relationship, it feels to me like this is um, for the long haul. There's a lot of patience here. It takes a long time for things to move to the next level. And perhaps there's a commitment here that will take you to the end of your lives. Oh, um, and it's, it seems to be something that's very slow moving. Um, and that's what the indication is here for, for January. It feels like in January, what will happen is in of 2023 is that you'll feel like it's moving too slowly, perhaps like it's um, like you have a commitment, you have a goal, but it might feel like it's going to take a long, long time to get there. So let's see what the rest of the year holds for you. So this is February. Ah, oh, February, we have an Ace of Cups, so it's a new beginning in love. It might feel quite quickly that there's a big movement from January to February, um, from the slow moving, feeling like nothing's ever going to change but you know where you want to go to. And then suddenly there's this new love that comes into your life. So if you are in a relationship already, then this love is going to be revived. Um, it looks like it's going to be a whole new beginning. Um, butterflies and the stomach once again. And if you're single, you are likely to begin um, in a, perhaps not necessarily immediately in a relationship with someone, but there's definitely some love in your life or there's a feeling of love in your life that comes in there and it's the beginning of something new. Then we have the Five of Swords in March and it feels like perhaps 
you've been let down by somebody, uh, by the person you love, or by this person that you fell in love with here in February, it feels like uh, there's something, yeah, there's some, they, they've let you down. They might have hurt your feelings. They might have given you an impression that they were going to be with you, but longer than they were. Um, and you're not really, you feel you left kind of picking up the pieces in, in March. I feel, however, that um, here in March, you have also, if you're in a relationship with someone, it's like you're kind of, um, not able to come to an agreement about one particular thing and it feels unresolved. It feels like you still need time to be able to overcome whatever it is that you need to work through in order to get to a state of peace. And then in April, we have the sun reverse. So I feel that a lot of this emotion that you've had here in March is resolved. You, there is definitely the beginnings of a, a feeling of things coming together. It is the sun, but it's reversed. Now, the, the sun reversed, many may say that you could, you know, the sun reversed is like the sun up, uh, upright. But I think here, it's like you almost there. It's like it's almost good, but they, you still have some reservations. And this could be with you in the relationship. Like if you had some kind of disagreement with your partner, you would be, it would be pretty much resolved by the time you get to April. But you might have some reservations about it. And if you are uh, somebody who's single and you met somebody in February and then you found that things haven't really worked out the way you wanted it to by March or things are a little bit different from what you expect it to be, then I think that by April, you're going to start feeling a lot better, but you're still going to harbor some kind of perhaps resentment or perhaps just a disappointment or sadness around what is what you've discovered here in March. We come to May. And May has the the four of cups reverse. So I feel like you uh this this feeling of you know perhaps not being um as content as you could be um is is also lightning in May. And so it feels like a good progression here where uh in May you're no longer kind of caught up in the same emotions as you were earlier. And this applies to you if you're in a relationship or you're outside of a relationship. Uh, I mean, if you're single. And here there's the sense that uh, there's like some kind of new inspiration that comes in, but it comes out of the what you've learned and what you've worked through and the emotions that you've worked through here and the perhaps the discontent that you experienced here. And so it's kind of coming out of that is this new inspiration. It's almost like springtime, you know, the first days of spring, when you come out of the winter, it's still quite cold. And uh, but the birds are chirping and buds that are beginning to blossom. And this is what this card here represents. And so as we come into June, we have the lovers, which is wonderful. So there are many different ways in which people read the lovers uh, card. And I would read this one in this context as you having come to an agreement with regard to your partner, if you are in a relationship. So whatever is here that's upset you, that you needed some time to get over, you've kind of come to a good agreement about that and things are in a better place for you here. If you are single and you have met somebody here, you might find by June that you're clearer about what your feelings are for that person. And you might come together with that person, even though there might have been some delays and some disappointments in between. But uh, you also stand a chance of meeting somebody new here, which could be a partner in your life, which could they, they come, somehow come across as being somebody that you could spend your life with or uh, have a long-term relationship with at the very least. So as we come to July, we have the Seven of Swords reversed. And I feel here, this is a card which talks about being able, able to overcome one's insecurities and being able to overcome one's, um, one's uh, suspicions in order to be able to open your heart more fully. And the Seven of Swords in the reversed position is really great for people who want to... Um, enter into a relationship or want to um, 
and and just be themselves, be themselves completely without having to hide anything about themselves. And I think it's also very useful for somebody who has been in a long term relationship with each other. You are in this long term relationship, but your partner doesn't know some of the intimate traumas that you might have had or something that you hold close to your heart and deep in your heart. And this in July, it seems like there's an opportunity to share something like this or to be able to overcome it so that you are beyond that. And it's you're not your insecurities or any kind of uh, hurt that you've had that's been lingering in your life. It no longer has a space in your life come July. Then you have the Ace of Pentacles. And if you have resolved your situation in that way, where you've let go of your insecurities, you've looked it in the eye, you've healed it, you worked on it, then you are likely to come into this Ace of Pentacles, which is in August and you have a new beginning. And if you notice there's the Ace of Cups here and right below is the Ace of Pentacles. And I feel here that you are going to be able to begin something new. You are going to be able to look towards a new beginning. You might be very fertile at this time. Um, you might be able to start something new with your new partner that you might have uh, fallen in love with here, entered into a relationship here, and here you might be setting up a new home for yourselves. Um, it's just a very fertile time in which you can go about starting something. You might decide to begin a business with your lover or partner. If you are single, I think that you might meet somebody at this point, or you could uh, see yourself quite seriously in a relationship at this point because you've worked through all this other stuff and you've come to certain decisions in your life. If you're single, this card could also mean that you've finally let go and made peace with past loves and with past relationships and you've you are you've come to the end of the road with that. Okay, so as we move into September, we have the Four of Swords and we have it reversed. And I would say that this card is usually a card where you might be uh, taking rest or having a reprieve. But here in the reverse position, what we have is a kind of urgency or eagerness to move things along. Now, you, what, what I do see here, though, is that it might not be the right time to move things along, but there's an urgency to do so. So I feel that this is uh, inspired by this Ace of Pentacles that you have here and this new beginnings that have been forming along the way here, this um, kind of determination that you echo in the first month of the year. And as you come to September, you're almost rearing to go, but it's not the right time to move ahead. So if you find that you have all this energy and you're trying to apply it in a particular way in your relationship, whether you are with somebody or whether you just you're single still looking for somebody I think just uh, be aware that things might not move along as fast as you wanted to even though you might be raring to go and get things off the ground okay so just just take it easy don't put the horse um don't put the cart in front of the horse okay as far as that, that is concerned we come to October and October we have the six of pentacles reversed so I feel here that um, there could be a chance for you to be able to share something um, which you might not necessarily have uh, thought of sharing previously. There might be an equal distribution of something. So if you have, if you are in a relationship, you might decide that something that is significant to you and perhaps meaningful. It might not be significant as in having a lot of value, but it might be meaningful as in um, the sharing of household tasks, for instance. It impacts your life uh, every day and it has a particular significance in your life. And for, for instance, that's just an example. But if you're in a relationship, a sharing, an equal sharing of something could take place where you decide to balance out the tasks or an equal sharing of the money that comes into the relationship is portrayed here. I feel that if you are single and you have this card coming in, you might feel feel that it's um, not necessary to be charitable. It's not necessary to be so generous. If you are somebody that goes out with somebody uh, who you're particularly interested in or you might be interested in or somebody who is a friend who could become a lover and you're always picking up the bull, you might decide that this is a time where you, you're not really keen on doing that or you don't feel that it's necessary to do that any longer. That's just an example. But the other ways in which this can rear its head is that um, you just feel a little bit more withdrawn. You just don't feel as generous in your heart as you normally do and 
you just craving an equality. It might be that you make most of the effort in terms of going to visit this person or, or just um, spending your money um, in terms of furthering the relationship. But um, here you are hoping that they will show you that they appreciate you and that they are willing to do the same. OK, so it could just be something like that. And that brings us to November. And November, we have the Eight of Swords reversed. So I feel that this relates to November, kind of relates to a little bit of what's happened previously uh, in the year where you might be healing whatever's residual from this area here. And I think that you no longer feel like imprisoned in a way you you do feel empowered you don't feel like you at the behest of another person's behavior and that but, but you're independent of it and that your emotions has have its own um kind of course it can it doesn't need to be dependent on the actions of another person and you feel quite free as a result of that i feel that this acknowledgement is quite strong in november so you might have felt that freedom quite early on already but it's this realization that takes place. So I feel like there's a few realizations here. I feel that there's one here and one here and then there's one here. And uh, also here, like these two are kind of connected. And these are important realizations for you as a human being, as somebody who is preparing yourself for love or wants to be the partner of somebody else or is the partner of somebody else. It's necessary for you to go inward and look at your own um your own behavior, your own emotional responses, and what's the motivations behind that, and to be able to assess yourself and evaluate yourself. And so November is a month where you will be doing that. But I feel that there is a degree of empowerment and, and freedom, a release almost, like you're released from something, you're released from worrying about what other people think, you're released from having to care so much about your partner and what they will think of you. You're just more able to be yourself in this month. And that's a huge realization. As we come to December, we have the nine of wands. And I think like all of this together, it shows me that as you come to the to the end of the year, you are a lot more comfortable than then you've been with your partner at the beginning of the year. You have your defenses down. You are more, um, um, in. you're more yourself with them. I would say that you allow yourself to be more yourself with them because you feel a lot more empowered and you feel a lot more, more um, a strength within you. You have overcome any kind of insecurities that we're holding you back in terms of sharing and being um, open in your relationship. You've overcome um, any kind of... Um, feelings of being let down or disappointments and you've come to terms with yourself and so it leaves you with a lot more freedom than you began the year with and a lot more uh, a sense of being a lot more healed and it feels to me that the relationship you have with your uh, significant other is a lot less formal than it has been uh, previously now if you are single um I would say that the combination of these cards here at the end of the year is really talking about this freedom and empowerment that you've received and also talking then about how you end the year on a much more relaxed note than uh, you began the year. I mean, it, you, as you begin the year, year, there's a little bit of tension. There's a little bit of there's like quite a strong desire and a passion uh, to be loved or to be um to be maybe taken seriously or to be considered or to be recognized or to be noticed in some way. And as you end the year, that's not important to you anymore. It's more like you fine with it. You And you don't need to put up any fronts to be somebody that you're not because you've overcome whatever insecurities that you've had and any hurts that you've uh, had. You're just pretty free and quite yourself and quite carefree and there's a very light feeling about you and so I think here as you come to the end of the year there's going to be quite a, a good chance of you attracting somebody to yourself that would uh, be in alignment with you not with in alignment with the tense uh, and uh, hurt and 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 insecure aspects of yourself but rather somebody who is uh, in alignment and matches your development and matches your empowerment and and your can, your respect for yourself and your appreciation of yourself and, and this is reflected outside of you and so you will attract somebody like that and um, I just want to um, ask one more question 
I just want to ask what follows in 2024 from this card here. And you have the King of Cups here. So I feel that you are going to, yeah, there's great potential for love uh, in 2024 and the development of love. Of course, you have the lovers here. You have the Ace of Cups here. You've got the Ace of Pentacles. There's a very good chance that you will find love in this year if you haven't already. And if you are in a relationship, there's a very good chance for you to renew your vows, to be able to renew the love that you have, to be able to set new um boundaries uh, as far as the love is concerned and to be able to perhaps take it to the next level perhaps you become engaged perhaps you get married um, perhaps you have a child so there is this movement there's in love this year but I think it, it this card here for 2024 shows me that there is going to be this is growth you know this is ascending um, along your evolution and you are actually going to be um, encountering more love and more um, experiences as far as love is concerned. For you, it seems to me that love is very much a, a space for you to heal and to grow and to take your life lessons from. And it seems to be very much like that from these cars. And I think that you will have the opportunity for that as well as just for more fun and happiness as you let go of some of the difficult work that you have to do with yourself in this year. Now, I'm saying, I'm using the word difficult, but, you know, for some of you, it will just be a thought. Maybe you just have the thought, OK, I'm I'm over my uh, the, whatever insecurities or suspicions uh, or mistrust that I had previously. Or I'm just, you know, I'm over the boredom that I had. I'm not... I'm over this discontent that I've had. I don't feel attacked anymore. I just feel free. I don't feel like I need to put up my defenses anymore. It might just be a single thought that you have. And that just, um, you know, is is that. And for others, it might be that you, you spend time working through that and coming to that realization. So for uh, you, it might differ. But I think it's a wonderful reading because there's definitely progress in terms of love. And there's, you know, you have the lover's card here and you have both the aces. And um, I think it's going to be a good year ahead. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I wish you all a fantastic 2023 as far as love is concerned. And blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the option number four, we're looking at love in 2023. Right, so for January, we have the Two of Wands. And I feel here in uh, January of 2023 that you might not have a perspective on where you're heading to. It might be a little bit blurred. So some kind of idea that you have had previously about the direction in which you are headed to, whether you're in a relationship or not, has become a little bit blurred. It's become a bit uncertain that that is the way forward. And you might have felt in you might feel in January that you've lost your vision for the relationship or you've lost your vision as a single person uh, um, as far as meeting somebody else is concerned and it needs some time or some space to be revised so perhaps your vision has changed perhaps your goals have changed as a couple and you find yourself a little bit contemplative about the direction that you need to take with regard to, to moving on from this point. As far as um, February is concerned, 
we have the five of pentacles here and it's reversed so it might be that in a, if you are in a relationship that both of you are coming out of some difficult times financially or you might be coming through some hurdles that you've had financially or materially and that has been a little bit difficult this card can also signify that you might be trying to make a baby and you haven't been successful in um in the conception and so if you are single and you have this card i feel that um the time of uh, being alone and facing things alone is uh, shortly coming to an end and this is the the warning of that this is the warning that things are shortly coming to an end and that you might be with somebody in the near future as we get to march we have the eight of wands reversed okay so March might be a month in which you've planned to travel, but you end up staying quite put during this time. Or it could be a time where you plan to have do a trip with your significant other and it just doesn't happen for some reason. Or you're still able to spend time with them, but you're not able to visit them. You might find that it's not possible to do so. If you are single, it might feel like things have slowed down a little bit or that things were moving ahead um, and things have just kind of become a bit stagnant as far as the love stuff is concerned so love is not the focus in that month of march not for you anyway however it doesn't mean that there isn't love in your life it just is that that is not your focus so i feel like your focus might be somewhere else it could be in terms of your spiritual development or journey and oh it could be just in terms of um, perhaps you pursuing some type of sport or something where you are working on your body uh, like training or something like this. Uh, but yeah, but it doesn't feel like love is going to be the, the priority for you. As we get to April, well, we have the lovers, but it's reversed. So we have the lovers here in April. And I think that um, if you are uh, in a relationship that you might find that you are needing to actually make an effort in terms of being able to spend some time with each other, I think it would be a good month in April to find some time with your significant other and to make that time now you might find yourself um experiencing some kind of resistance towards spending time with your loved one um but this is something that you need to overcome in order to be uh and to be able to spend this quality time with each other if you are a single person you might meet somebody in the month of april you might have met this person already i feel like you have met this person already to be honest and um yeah I, I think I just I, I feel like you or you, you might have known this person before. Maybe you haven't met them, but you've you might have come across them or you might have seen them from a distance. But there is something perhaps you haven't met them exactly, but you're kind of familiar with their energy. Maybe you've been longing for them and they are in your life and you've come across them. But I feel that here, even though you have come into contact with them, and there's definitely a connection in terms of the energy. You, you both have definitely bonded. It seems like there isn't a chance for you to play out what is uh, what is actually happening between you two. So it might be that you are separated. Maybe you are far away from each other. Uh, as this card here shows, it might be that you've met this person and then you weren't able to be with them uh, or join them and they had to move off to somewhere else. Well, you, you might be that you're just at different locations, so you can't really... Uh, consummate the relationship or bring the relationship to the next level on in whichever way you'd like to then as we come to may we have the justice and it's reversed so i feel here that you might be feeling that in terms of your love life that things aren't working out the way you wanted to or as fast as it needs to work out for you to be happy and satisfied in it or for you to feel like it's working or for you to feel like the universe has got your back i think here in um, May, you might feel some kind of frustration regarding her love life and the fairness uh, of it. So this in terms of relationships uh, that you are in already, it might feel that there is some need to bring fairness or equality in your relationship in terms of the um, distribution of chores, in terms of perhaps distribution of emotions or uh, showing of emotions there's something here which asks you to just be a little bit more um, aware of what the give and take is in the relationship if you are single it just it feels like there's quite a lot of frustration coming through it's like 
you might feel like, you know, the universe has let you down because you're not able to be with the person that you perhaps have met here or or that you haven't met somebody at all until that point. And so it kind of gives you a, a feeling of um, of losing faith in a way. And as we come to June, we have the Seven of Wands. So here I feel that even though you're, um, you have kind of felt like almost like you've l lost faith in the month prior to that, you're not fighting it anymore. You're just going along with the flow. You're quite zen-like in the month of June. Things are happening. You might be busy. You might have quite a lot of things happening. You know, I think that you have a busy six months because I see you busy here. You could be traveling here. You, you're going to be moving or traveling here or things are going to be happening quite quickly here. Um, regardless, yeah, or or perhaps you are unable to travel here, but you plan to travel here. And then here, it seems like you are busy. Again, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of communication activity. And um, it, it feels like you're just kind of surfing through it, like quite zen-like. It doesn't feel like you... Uh, um, overwhelmed by it in any way and it doesn't feel like you harboring any of this feeling of um, things not being just uh, in, in your in your partnership if you are single and you have this card coming up it also it has the same meaning uh, it looks like you're kind of cruising you're just dealing with one thing at a time taking things in your stride and it's almost like um, love and um, uh, yeah, love on romantic matters kind of uh, have to take their place in the list of things that you have to take care of. So as we come to July, we have the Knight of Cups and it looks like there will be some kind of proposal coming your way or some kind of invitation that comes your way. And I think that here there is a chance for love to actually take off. Um, we, remember, we have the lovers here, which are in the reverse position. So perhaps it wasn't able to take off at that point. But in July, there is a chance. So if you have indeed met somebody uh, that you've been waiting to see again, because they are at a distance, I feel that July will be a very good time for you to meet with each other and to see each other or at least for them to come forth and talk about what their feelings are or to indicate to you in some way or the other how they might be feeling. Now, if you are in a uh, fixed relationship, in a, in a permanent kind of relationship, a marriage or something like this, you're going to find that in July there is a lot more ch chances for you and your significant other to have more uh, of a romantic um, enc encounter with one another you might find that it's easier to make time to be with each other you might find that your schedules allow you to be with each other and that you are able to perhaps even take some time away you might be able to travel somewhere together as you come into august we have the four of cups reversed and here it's a card that i think talks about how your um like your boredom or your your frustrations that you felt earlier at some point is has given way and you no longer uh, feel that you've departed from that and that's quite a significant feeling that encapsulates august it's like there's a relief from uh, a feeling of stagnation or being stuck M movement has begun you haven't you're not completely out of the woods as yet in terms of that feeling of stagnation but there is uh you, ha you like there is a, a sun the sun peeping through the clouds and there is a chance for you to spring forth and i think that it's almost like you allowing yourself to thaw out you know it's like you've been frozen here and upset with the universe for things not working out like because there has been love but you've not been able to be close to the person that you need to be with or things haven't evolved in the way that you'd like it to and then here comes this big proposal and it's like you spend then August kind of thawing out and allowing this proposal to kind of warm you up and uh, you're not rushing forward, you're not gushing, you're just taking it one step at a time, being very cautious in your approach and not letting things um, excite you too much because you don't want to get too invested uh, in a way. You're just trying to feel out 
what's actually going on. And so I think that if you are in a permanent relationship and you have this card coming in, you might be coming out of some kind of rut that you've entered into your with your partner. Perhaps you find yourselves always doing the same things. Um, and now you have uh, found that there's a new spark and you can try something new. Perhaps you have a new hobby and you have a new routine and you, you're just kind of feeling your way into a new routine. Okay. And if you are single, then I think that this is the card that says, well, um, let me just see how this feels. Let me just allow myself to be a bit more open and not allow the hurt that I've had in my life to guide me and my experience in this month. Okay. So that's what you're experiencing there in August. As you come to um, September, we have the strength reversed. Now I feel here that um, you are very much in control of your life and very much in charge of your experience and feels like that along the way, even though there was a frustration here. But I think that as you are coming to September, you might feel that the strength is waning a little bit. So you're kind of more uh, giving in more to your vulnerabilities. You might feel that the strength is there underneath it all, but you have developed a, very, a much softer edge. Um, and so you're not, um, yeah, you're not wearing your strength on your sleeve, so to say. It's more, it takes a bit of a back seat. Now, if you are in a relationship, um, I would say that, you, you find out in September that you don't always have to uh, enforce your will. You don't always have to be right. You can allow the situation to kind of progress without having to forcibly show your point of view. And I think here that that is very significant for you if you are in a in a relationship, if you are single. And um, I think that here you might be Find, you might find yourself not less independent because you are still going to be quite independent, but I feel like you find yourself more prone to allowing yourself to be to come across as being less independent. Um, I think what I'm really trying to say here is like you allow yourself to be more friendly to any prospects that might be coming your way and you don't need to put up this front that you are this type of person and that they should accept you the way you are type of thing, but you are more kind of willing to get to know the other person. And um, yeah, there's this opportunities here for you to have your strength, to be strong, to be powerful, but not to be in the face of that person, not to, you know, throw it on the face of that person. So it's almost like you are learning to trust a little bit more here. And then you are able to sort of, I would say, not comp you're not compromising your personality because you are who you are, but it's like you are learning to take down some of your barriers and allow some of those, yeah, those barriers to fall away so that you can be more than just your strength and more than just your independence. And so as we come into October here, we have the Six of Pentacles and there is some kind of feeling of uh, being patronized here and being perhaps taken care of, uh, perhaps the person in your life has offered you some kind of loan or some kind of um, um, financial stability or has offered you something on a material level that makes your life a lot easier than it has been. It could be that you are the one who's offering this to somebody and making their life a lot easier. Now, if you are single and you don't have anyone in your life, I would say that you are, you are, you are a lot more generous in your uh, approach to uh, to love in your in your affiliations. I feel like you could be very generous with your time in the, come in the month of October. You might be volunteering your time somewhere. And this also gives you an opportunity to be in a place where you might be meeting somebody. All right. If you haven't already met somebody here and here. So um, if you have, like, if you began the year single and then you've met somebody along the way, then this card here in October would mean that you are especially followed from the strength is that there is a kind of give and take and a kind of um, shifting of boundaries between you and this person in order to kind of find a comfortable position for you two because you both feel like very strong-willed characters and there's a way you need to come to some kind of compromise. And so these two cards together show that there is some kind of compromise being formed here. And it's not going to be to the detriment of either one of you. 
you are both going to be happy to make this sacrifice in a way. It's not really a sacrifice. It's more like a, well, a compromise. And we come to November and we have the Knight of Wands and things are you're firmly on your way to having a wonderful relationship full of passion and attraction and uh, desire. And there's no holding you back. And whether you are in a relationship already, you're going to or whether you are single, you're going to find that you are feeling quite um, excited by the presence of your partner or the thought of your partner and you want to experience more intimate uh, relations with this person and you are definitely there's something been revived in you uh, here so you know as you start off the year with like this um, kind of maybe lacking some kind of perspective as far as the relationship was concerned well by the time you've gone through all of this you've definitely gained your perspective and this is confirmation that you have a very strong, good perspective on where your he relationship's heading and how it will unravel. Now, if you are, or unfold, I would say. Now, if you are single and you have this card here, I definitely think that you're going to meet somebody or you're going to be in, around somebody who is, uh, who you feel very attracted to and who might feel quite attracted to you and might make some moves on you. All right, so, and then we have the card of temperance. What a wonderful way to end the year. So this card has more than one meaning. And one of the meanings, the more literal meaning, as we as you come to the end of the year, is that of uh, equanimity, of balance, of the good and the bad coming together. Uh, well, not the bad uh, in, a, in a sense that it's negative, but rather the, the unpleasant forms into the pleasant. Okay, it's like the pleasant purifies the unpleasant and so whatever you've been working with and dealing with as a person in your life the December is a great time for it to kind of come together and it's almost like a a, a gift being wrapped and you're making a bow at the top of it because it's finished it's complete it's good to go and um, there's another uh, meaning to this card so it could also mean that a temperance can be read as uh, a card where you do meet your soulmate or you are in contact with your soulmate there is a deep understanding between you two and some people might call this the twin flame but it is just a very deep understanding between you two and there's this sense of being one with one another and uh, it's like you have become one with this person so that could be a very real reality for you whether you are in a relationship or whether you're just about to get into a relationship if you head to the end of the year and you are still not in a relationship I think that this is a very very beautiful way to begin the year because there's definitely a sense of balance and alignment with the universe and uh, kind of knowing in your life and when you have that there's a very good chance that you will attract somebody with that similar vibration uh, to you all right, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this has been useful. Do visit this reading uh, through the year and comment and let me know if it resonated or not. All right. So I love you, love you lots, all of you, and uh, wishing you a fantastic, lovely, full of love 2023. May you have a beautiful time and may you find all the love that you desire. Okay. Wishing you all much love and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the option number five, we're asking, what does love look like in 2023? So we have the Ace of Swords in January. And the card here is Respiration. And I feel that in January, uh, you're going to be able to articulate for yourself what it is that you need what is it that you strive for now you not might not be clear about what the outcome will be but you are clear about the direction that you need to take you might not be clear about the details of the direction that you need to take but there's certainly uh, a beginning of action that needs to be taken towards your respiration or towards you being able to breathe more or more easily towards a certain freedom that you might have or need in your life. So if you are in a relationship right now, you might feel that you need to take some time off to pursue your own path as you begin the year. If you haven't uh, um, decided to do that, if you are simply in a relationship and you 
don't feel that you need any time away. What you might feel is the need to be able to articulate yourself more clearly as to what your needs are in order to be able to relieve any anxiety that you might have. You might also need to speak up about some things that might be worrying you or where you feel that you've reserved your opinion until now. And so January is going to be definitely a month where you are articulating your thoughts a lot more clearly to your partner. Now, if you are single and you have the Ace of Swords and in January here, I think what it means is that you are well on your way to a new beginning and to taking certain action that will certainly uh, deliver you into uh, a frequency in which you'll be able to attract somebody uh, to yourself. And let's just see what the year holds for you. Okay, so you've made progress. And as you move into February, you have the Page of Swords. So it feels like here you're still moving into the unknown in some way or the other, but it definitely means, it definitely shows that you ha are moving. You are making progress. You are actually taking action. Now, I feel here in January, you might be thinking that you need to go in one direction or at the end of December uh, last year, you might have thought that you need to go in one direction in January. But in fact, you end up going in a different direction in February. So um, you might have decided that already in January. But as you come to February, you are doing something that's a little bit different from what you thought you would be doing in uh, earlier on in January. As far as your relationship is concerned, it's very clear now to your partner that you intend to take certain action, which results in the decomposition of your relationship, as well as um, the, perhaps the recomposition of yourself. Now, this is not necessarily something that's negative or bad for the relationship. It could actually prove to be what exactly what the relationship needs in order to thrive. If you are single, you are definitely on your way to bring yourself into a closer ambit to a potential partner. You are, have set off on a journey uh, with quite a clear goal. And it feels like you really are very clear about who you are and what you want. And we just have to see what comes from that. So let's look at March. And there you have it. By March, you've met somebody. If you are single. That is by March, you've definitely met somebody and there's a good chance that you meet them through somebody else or in a setting where there are other people. And if you are in a relationship with some with somebody already, it feels like there is celebration of some kind as you come to March. There's a kind of yeah a party, a celebration, something which uh, allows you to celebrate the abundance that you have. There is definitely a chance for you to be able to um, enjoy your partner away from all the mental acuity and uh, gymnastics and more um, as far as love and romance and just joy is concerned, happiness. As we come into April, you have the Ten of Cups and you have accomplishment. So I feel here that you have definitely felt like you have achieved something as you come into uh, April. You've definitely been clear about your goal from the very beginning. You've moved towards your goal. You've experienced the joy and the abundance that you would as a result of taking that action. And as you come to April, you are at the pinnacle of your joy and success. And the card here is called accomplishment. And so you've definitely f have d accomplished um being in that state that you want to be in with your partner that brings you both joy and well-being. And if you were single, you have definitely found yourself um, in a relationship with somebody and you are celebrating. I think that if you aren't in a relationship, you are still celebrating come up April. You're feeling very good about yourself. You're feeling quite beautiful. You're feeling like you're truly able to experience another person exactly as you are without having any pretense or anything to hide. And I think that um, this could result in you really allowing yourself to attract somebody who is on the same level to you. As we come into May, you have the card verification here, the art card, which is the equivalent of the temperance in other decks. And there is a, a sense here that you are able to truly 
experiment with the emotions that you have. You know, in this process here, you have started with such clarity and such determination that by the time you come to May and you've achieved this abundance and this accomplishment here, that you are secure enough and confident enough to be able to explore yourself in your entirety and to be able to look deeper within yourself for a different experience, something that's perhaps a bit avant-garde. So May could represent for you, you finding yourself and a different aspect of yourself within your relationship with your partner. And if you are in, if you are single, it could represent a feeling of you falling in love with yourself and feeling really happy about it. Um, I feel here that there is, um, the, it's almost like the evolution of love, like the Ten of Cups going into the art uh, is like a natural progression of love and the ability to experience love at a very deep level. This idea that love is in all there is in the universe and this is reflected in your partnership as well as reflected in your life as a single person seeking partnership. As we come to June, the card is inversion or suspension and that is the equivalent of the hanged man. And I feel here that love is perhaps not the, your priority in the month of June. It feels like there are other things that concern you or other matters that take your attention, other matters that demand your more immediate attention. And perhaps you need a bit of time to retreat from all of this activity at the beginning of the year and to be able to just look inward and feel uh, what you've experienced until now. There's a moment of, um, it says inversion, but I almost feel like it's a moment of revision because you need to take a moment in to review and to analyze and to feel and to um, almost um, acknowledge what has what you've experienced until now. Now, if you're in a partnership, you might find that all this excitement that you've experienced at the beginning of this year has led to uh, some kind of um, space where you need to just have space by yourself. You just need to take a moment to enjoy yourself, to take a breather from one another in order to be able to come back to the relationship a bit more refreshed. This is not a breakup by any means. It's just taking a little bit of space for yourself to take care of yourself and your emotional and spiritual well-being. I think that if you're single, you might just find that you have are just completely occupied with other things at this time and love is not your priority. It's not at the top of your mind. As we come into July, we have the three of wands reversed. So it feels to me that there is a chance that things could be moving quite quickly here. And that is perhaps the reason that you've taken time to think about it. And there is, a, it's almost like you're holding back. You don't want to move things too fast because this is maybe scary for you or maybe you just need a bit more time to think about things. Now, if you are in a partnership already, well, that may, may mean that your partner perhaps wants to move in with you or they want to move to you or you, they want to just take things to the next level in your relationship and you're not necessarily ready for that. Now, if you are single, I think here you are um, still maintaining the clarity of what you want, uh, but it's not accompanied by the the fire that you need to be able to propel the the vision that you have. And so there might just be a delay as far as that's concerned or kind of seeking that fire. So July is a time for seeking that fire within you and getting that fire to burn a lot more clear, clearly and a lot more a lot more brighter. It's almost like you need to seek the passion in your life um, because the mental work that you've been doing until now has only uh, served you in one way and you need passion and motivation to drive you here. All right. And so that's what you'll be seeking. As we come into August, we have the King of Crop cups and we have transition so we're definitely moving through spaces and through emotions here um, and you're definitely coming back to more softer 
romantic aspect of yourself. And if you are in a relationship, you're going to find that you transition to this quite, quite easily after having these uh, moments here where you are a bit more in yourself. And as you come to August, you're going to find that you are communicating quite clearly with your partner in a much softer tone with a lot more insight and a lot more respect and compassion, empathy and just love and care. And if you are single, I, I think that it's quite possible for you to meet somebody in the King of Cups here in August. If you haven't already met somebody here, um, there is a good chance that you will meet somebody. If not, what you might find is that this person that you met already, that you were hesitant here to move things along faster with, well, they've kind of come around to meet you halfway and you are impressed by that and you want to move things along, okay? So as we come to September... We have the four of ones in the card of delight. And I think here, this kind of transition, you know, maybe this person's asked you to marry them somewhere along here uh, or here. And and then you've just needed some time to think about whether you were moving too fast or you just needed some time to reflect on it. And here you were kind of feeling the need to delay that. And here then you've decided to accept it. And here you actually do get married. And... Um, you are together. Either way, there's a celebration here. And this is directly underneath the Three of Cups, which is also a kind of celebration in a way. And I think you have the Ten of Cups, which is definitely a celebration. Well, the Three of Cups here is not as much a celebration as it is a get together, uh, coming together, a meeting with, which is enjoy. Uh, but I feel that is a celebration personally, because I think when you come together, enjoy, then you are celebrating Um you not, might not be celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, but you're celebrating life itself. And you definitely have that delight here in the Four of Wands as you come to September. A fantastic card. If you are in a relationship already, you're going to be finding that you are, you've come to a new space with your partner. Perhaps you've decided to renew your vows. Perhaps you decide to quietly reignite uh, your relationship and um, it's not something that everyone needs to know about. But there's definitely a renewing of some delight and some passion here in this space. And perhaps taking a vow to be um, more there for each other. And I think that uh, that this is a yeah, wonderful card to have here in September. So you begin anew in October. There's a brand new beginning. It's almost like there is definitely a marriage here. And then you start new. You start your new life. And the card is called emanation. And so the question is, you're walking into the unknown. And what will come from it? Um, and this is the, the curiosity that you have in uh, October. And um, if you are in a relationship and you have this uh, curiosity with your partner, it's a, it's a good thing because you are on a, an alert and you are looking at your partner with fresh eyes. Now, if you are a single person and you have this card, you are ready to go out and meet that person that you might have met or encountered earlier on here. Uh, or they might have sent you a message that charmed you right here. So I think that uh, October is new beginnings, either towards love or in love. And as we come to um, November, th these are lovely cards, by the way. I just love your cards. They, I think they're the best uh, so far. Um, and you have the card of conviction here and the Knight of Cups. Now, this knight is riding through with a very clear conviction. And there is definitely a sense of wanting what he wants and a sense of wanting to propose, wanting to be romantic, wanting to just offer their love and being a true romantic about it. And I think here your partner um, or you are going to be feeling that and be running towards each other with this passion and with this love, but truly deep love that you have for each other. And, um, and truly convinced by that. And if you are single, I think that 
this is another opportunity for you to meet somebody. So I tell you, you can meet somebody here, here. That would be March, April, um, May. I mean, sorry, March, <laughs> March, April, August. And here in November, there's you have all these opportunities to be able to meet somebody. So this is... Um, a knight of cups here and it's quite a strong card for love as well and for meeting somebody and then we move into december and we have the five of pentacles and the card is called adversity so you might be you know all this kind of craziness that you've had through the year of love and parties and enjoyment and celebrations and um it might lead to some kind of adversity in terms of um your financial well-being you might feel like you don't have enough or like you've squandered your wealth you might feel like you've you don't have anything at that given moment but that's just a feeling that you have it doesn't necessarily reflect the truth that is in your life um with regard to um to love it might feel that you are uh have invested quite a lot into some of these relationships but perhaps it's something has come up that made you feel differently about it or it might you might feel that you've let go of your career your goals your personal goals in pursuit of love and that's almost like uh you've squandered your time you might feel like that as you come to the end of the year in december because perhaps you're reviewing your year and you feel at a loss for what you have not achieved from a material point of view okay i just want another clear i just want a clarification for this card We have the page of wands. So regardless of the adversity that you might experience or feel, here we have equivocation and we have the page of wands and you are raring to go once again as you come to the end of the year. You are still full of passion, full of desire and quite robust about it. And you're willing to take the steps necessary to fight for it and to run after it and to go for it. You're not messing around here. You are definitely on a path to finding what it is that you want. And, you know, we haven't had that many wands cards here. We've just had this four of wands. Uh, well, we've had the three of wands, actually. And we've had, but it was reversed. And we have the four of wands. And we have a wand card here. So it comes out of this uh, fool and this knight of cups and this pentacle. And I think that what this card is basically talking about is that at the end of the year, you will still have this drive, you'll still have this motivation, and you'll still have this passion in you. With regard to relationships, it's a very good card to have, especially if you've been in a long-term relationship, because what it uh, signals is a new, fresh desire for one another, an attraction for one another. And if you are, aren't in a relationship, well, you're raring to go, and you most likely are going to meet somebody when you are heading out in this way all right so i'm going to leave it there and i wish you a fantastic year of love in 2023 may you have make great headway in terms of your love life and you have fantastic cards here so i see you having a fabulous year um as far as love is concerned I'm wishing all a very blessed time and blessings abound from kismet rising